Hello and welcome back to Kev's Vintage Tracks Repair Channel. In today's episode, we're going to be fitting the pistons and conrods into our engine block on our Ferguson 23C engine. All the parts used in this episode and other episodes are all sponsored by MRQK. UK. Well, I hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome back to Cave's Vintage Tractor Repair Channel. In today's episode, we're going to be fitting the pistons into our cylinder block and connecting the, the big ends to the crankshaft. What we need to do first of all, if you want to come over to the vise. Okay, so we've placed our piston rings, okay, to where we, where we want them. I'll put a bit of oil on because that will help hold them in place. I've put some oil down the bore of the liner and some assembly lube on the journal of the crankshaft. So what we're going to do, we're going to fit the piston, so we'll bring it over here, lie it down so we're onto that first ring. All right, so we're just there. This is what I would normally use, but we had a few takes trying to get this right and this one is now going to go into bin because what happens, it will compress it tight enough and part of the, the sleeve here gets stuck down there. So that one's going to go in the scrap bin. But I have got this other cheap little, well, this is a cheap little set this one. You get all these different size collars. So we'll get that on there. We'll go over the, the first one. Let's get these pliers on if I can. So I just hook in. So I don't normally use these, this is why it's looking a bit of a muddle. But when you're working on these old engines, you have to overcome different problems. So I hook that in there and then squeeze it, squeeze it down. So I'll just get a piece of tissue again, hold it nice and tight, give it a gentle tap. Right, that's as far as I'm going to go because it's now starting to bottom out the top on the next ring. So I'll take it off. So there, give it a drop, and then it goes down. And if we need to, we can adjust the ring gaps again. So we can always sort of keep an eye on it. So these are good, they do work, but I, I do like the other sort. So we're back on, on there, nice and tight, piece of tissue. Then it goes. So we've got our engine, it's on our engine spinner. So what we'll do, we shall turn it over. I like to go all the way the other way up. So we've now got, it's now connected, well nearly connected onto our, our journal. So we get the opposite side, oh sorry the opposite one. There is a little dowel on here so you can't really get them the wrong way around. But what you always want to remember, number one stamped on there and is number one stamped on there. So we'll put the next one in. There's enough assembly lube on there at the moment. Make sure they're, they're fitted in there nicely. And then lie it over the top. So that's on there. Now, what I like to do is use some fastener assembly lube because that'll pull these bolts down nice and tight. So. You can use engine oil, that's fine, works just as well. Not too much, you just want enough just to lubricate the threads. Now, we've got to put a lock tab on here as well. So we'll push that one in, just gently. And then we'll get the other one in. So we'll get our ratchet with a 5.8 socket on it, nip them up just to there. We need to just turn the engine a little bit. There, just to there. And we'll just bring that round. So we fit it in tight. Let's nip it up. And the other one. We need to torque these up between 65 and 70 foot pounds onto there. See, I like what I like to do, bring it so far, then you know you're not pulling one all the way down to its finished torque. So nice and gentle. Here you go, on. 65. 
45. And again. There we go. That's now talked up. This is how I do it. It is up to you. But what I then like to do is turn it. By doing that, it's now turning on the lobe of the crankshaft. So this one's in. Look, I can turn it with my finger. There's no tight spots or anything like that. Because if you put them all in, then decide to go back and do that, then all of a sudden you've got a tight spot. You're not going to know which one it is. So work your way down. So I've done number one. So what we're going to do is bring the crankshaft round, bottom of its stroke is number four. So I shall turn the engine up the other way. So here's our engine up the other way again. This is why these need to go on now, because as you're putting these in, it may make yours creep up. So I shall get number four. Remember, just keep as clean as you can when you're working on this engine. A little bit of oil again. A little bit of our assembly lube down onto the journal. And all these journals I know are clean because I've had rags on them to keep them clean. So there's no, I definitely know there's no dirt or anything down there. But if in doubt, clean it again. You've already put assembly lube down there. Make sure you got number four. And we're gonna just lay that down there to where we had it before. We pulled the con rod down onto the crankshaft journal. Give it a bit of a wiggle. I mean, sometimes they're a bit tight. There we go. A little bit of oil or obviously this assembly fastener lube that I've got here whichever suits you. Sometimes what you might also want to do when you're putting these lock tabs on is put a little bit of oil on, on the edge of the bolt or the, the base of the bolt. Because sometimes when you put these on and if you do them dry, they'll ring over and twist. All right, so as these are going in, there's a little bit of this lube going on there. So nip that up. Don't ram them up tight straight away. Just nip them down. Same thing again, just bring around so far, sort of half to probably give or take. All right, and then all the way. Okay, remember we want to turn the engine over. There you go. It's getting a little bit stiffer because you're now going to start fighting against the piston rings in the bore going up and down, but I can turn that nice and easy. I know there's no tight spots in these, these ends here. I know they're okay. What we can do, get our water pump pliers. This is what I use. And what we want to do is fold these little tabs up. So just sort of just hook it on and then just fold them up. So sometimes the, the inside ones are sometimes a little bit harder to do. Last one there. Nice and neat. For what these cost, just replace them when you're working on your engine. Try not to use the, the old ones again. So what you can see here, you see what obviously the circle, that's the base of the bolt. So what it's done, it's been put on there dry. So it's torn and compress the metal in there. And little bits could break off and go inside. These lock tabs have been used again. It's like anything, if I fold this enough times, it's gonna break. And to be honest, that's what's gonna happen there when I fold these over. You might not look like they're broke, but what could happen over time, the engine's doing all its cycles, what it needs to do, piece of that gets broken off, it's gonna lay in the sump. Yes, there is a strainer basket, and yes, it goes through a filter as well, but, we don't want that little piece of metal getting jammed up in here somewhere. Always you know, have a locked up engine and all that hard work is gone for something that costs a couple of quid. I've done these two. What we're gonna do, what I'll do next is I'll fit two and three and then we'll come back and have another look.
Now fast forwarded the, the film a little bit. It's the same process, put number one, two, three, and four on. Put them on, turn them, and make sure they don't stick. It is getting tighter, but it's moving around nice, nice and smoothly. There's no tight spots, there's nothing catching. It's just moving around nice, nice and gently. So what we'll do, we'll just turn the engine so we can actually see them again. And just have a look from this side. And we'll just turn them over again. Nice and neat, nice and smooth. No tight spots. And they're all coming to where they need to be. What I tend to do is put some nice clean rag down the balls so when it's sitting here, no rubbish or anything is gonna go in there. I hope it makes sense. I hope you've enjoyed it. So I shall see you next time.